Hello, today I'm going to talk about the pediatric elbow traumatic radiograph audit study. So here is the objective. First introduction, second literature review. Third is material and method. Fourth is the result and discussion. Fifth, conclusion. And the last one is the reprim. The trauma is a common condition treated in AHC in a hospital uh, for children every day. And elbow yard radiograph is a full choice in our city. So, pediatric elbow fracture is commonly misdiagnosis and challenging in radiological diagnosis. And it happens common in pediatric population. Mm. Elbow picture also challenging in the drug inter interpretation because of presenting secondary as civilization center. Mm. It is the most common intraarticular fracture of skeletally in major elbow is the lateral humeral formula fracture and the second most common elbow fracture in children is lateral humeral formula fracture. The most common pediatric elbow fracture and subracanular fracture of the humerus, the radial neck fracture, lateral condylar fracture, and media epicondylar fracture. Interpretation of pediatric elbow radiograph is complicated by cartilaginous nature of the image elbow. The different idea about this diagnosis and radiological challenging of pediatric elbow fracture that is why I bring up to review about pediatric elbow fracture in Hong Kong Hospital for Children. In literature review, elbow fracture account for 65 to 75% of all fracture in the upper extremity in the children. So this image shows about the anatomy of the elbow, children elbow in the radiogram. So A is the anatomy in the AP view. So we can see some special anatomy that we have to look for. And the B is the lateral. B and C is the lateral view. So also there is many points we have to look for in the X-ray in case of the concern about the fracture. So we have to remember and know clearly about all these points in the radiogram look line. And this is the schema about the elbow anatomy also. And so along with the aid, which can be present in the radiograph. So for example, one year we have to see the olecranon and so three,
So here we, we see the four to five year, we have to see the uh, Raja head. And four to five years also, we have to see the internal condyline draw clear around eight to the nine. And nine to eight year, we have to see the Oregonon Center, Ossification Center can be present in the Rajo's image. And it's now around, it's now going to lie around 10 years old. Okay. This is the image. So about the rain and how it look like the all of the ossification center in the elbow x-ray. So the A is so about uh, capitulum and B so about the capitulum and larger head center and C so about the Capitulum, larger head, and internal condyla center. And this image so the in A so about the capitulum, larger head, internal condyla, oleg uh, trochlea, and olecranum. And the last one is. In B, so it's about the external condyline center, what's the case at some time. So in most case, elbow fracture in children are caused by a fall on an outstretched arm, a fall directly on the elbow, a direct blow to the elbow. So how to diagnose this in the imaging? So elbow heradiograph is the initial imaging usually used in most center of the pediatric hospital. The evaluation of pediatric elbow X-ray in the setting of trauma is challenging. And why? So this image or this picture so about the how we do the elbow X-ray. So also how to be uh, do the AP view of the elbow, and B so the how we do the lateral elbow X-ray. To be more easy or uh, reduce of challenging in the reading of the elbow picture, we use the approach like this. First one, we focus on technical adequate theme. We look for soft tissue swelling and joint infusion is focused on fat pad sign. The alignment, we see the, we look for anterior humbra line and uh, arajo capital capital line to identify about the dislocation. We look for the ossification center. We use the abbreviation of cryotol or cryotol. We have to look for the fracture line. On the distal humerus, we have to look for the fracture of the radius or ulna. 
if we do not see any fracture but positive fat pad sign but only positive fat pad sign we can call up patient around seven to ten days to see the real fracture sign So this image shows about the fat pad look like. So A and B is normal, I think. But the C is, we see the elevate of anterior fat pad and the positive, posterior fat pad. This image so about the fracture line on the Raja head. In A and B, we can see the fracture line of the olecranon. And this image so about the how we identify the elbow dislocation by using anterior humor line and Radio Capetala line. Supracondyla fracture usually occur in the humerus bone, just about the elbow joint. Seen primarily in young children age around four to eight years old. The more common type of elbow fracture seen by pediatric orthopedic surgeon. This is the table. So about the how we classify the elbow fracture by using modified gallant classification. So the supracandular fracture we divide into four subtypes. So this image, so the we the schema and the real image. Schema with the real uh, radiogram. So A is Galan one, B is Galan two, and C is Galan three, and D is Galan four. And this is the original of the gallant uh, fracture of subracandular fracture. The, in the original one is we classify only three times, first, two, and third time. So I mean that the first is non-displaced fracture. Second is displaced, but Non complete, and the third is fracture with com uh, complete fracture with complete displacement or sub uh, of uh, supracondylar portion of the distal pointers. The second is lateral condylar fracture occur typically through the lateral metaphysis extending into the epiphysis of, and often extend into the articular surface. So this is the same and the real elbow radiograph in the Milch classification. So in milch classification, divide only two subtype fracture of the lateral condyla. No, no, of the yes of the lateral condyla. And if we According to the Jacob and West classification, so lateral canilla 
and divide into three subtypes depend on how displacement and how involved the articular surface. And if we look in the song classification, which is dependent on, on degree of the displacement, fracture pattern, and the stability of the fracture. So we divide the lateral condylar fracture into five stage. The third common is major condylar fracture. It occurs through the metaphysis of the major condyle and exit between the ossification center of the lateral and major condyle effect of the trochlea or through the lateral condylar epiphysis at the capitulotrochlea group. So according to the Mills classification, so the divide in only two subtypes of the major condylar fracture. But if we follow the Gilfoy, Jacob and Wolf's classification to major condylar fracture divide into three subtypes. This is the abrupt classification for the only granule fracture. It divide, the fracture was divided into the five subtype. According to where the fracture line goes through or runs through. Is the, this, this is the major classification also for the only granon fracture, which is divided into three subtypes, and there are in there are two in of each subtype. And short term classification also for the only granon fracture. We just divide in, we force divide into five subtypes also. This is a structure classification for all the granular fracture which was divided into six subtypes. According to AO classification of oligranum fracture, which was divided into three subtypes. Montesier fracture was divided into three subtypes according to Bardo classification. Lead classification for Montesier fracture with dissipation 
which was defined into course of time. Jupiter classification of the cost real multi fracture into the core subtype also. This is the Mason classification for Meragia head and neck fracture, which was divided into four subtypes. Brian classification for radar head and neck fracture was divided into the three subtypes according to the angle of the fracture. Judith classification for radar head and neck fracture, which was divided into the Prime subtype according to the degree of the uh, angle of friction. Chamber classification for the uh, larger head and neck into the three subtype. Another more called elbow dislocation. We divide it into three subtypes of dislocation according to anatomical condition. So material and other office the below it. So this is the retrospective study we do from 1st of January 2021 uh, to 31 of December 2021. So all collecting data is we choose from the hospital imaging web, database or imaging system to select the case and medical information system to get the patient identification. There are two main objectives in the study, which include first one is assessing type of the echo picture, and the second one is it percentage in X-ray detection. Inclusion criteria. All elbow fracture in every posterior and lateral projection of patient at age from birth up to 16 years old with history of trauma or injury at the upper extremity and came to a uncle hospital for children in between 1st January to 2021 to 31. December 2021, with clinical concern of elbow bone fracture. Inclusion criteria, case with age about 16 years old, mostly in case of staff, repeated or follow-up case, having elbow history or other reason or elbow radiograph without any history or clinical concern. Positive radiographic findings for elbow fracture are mainly focused on the combination of the fracture line, secondary sign, mean positive fracture sign, and swollen surface. In collected data was kept in Excel for form for analysis and which is secured by passport. So here is the Flow chat, the total case we, we collected was 303. In the, in this, we 
included case as of only 196 and positive case in H3 only 91 percent. So the, this graph so about the the incident of elbow fracture. Now it, it, it shows about the the signs, the incident of the sign of elbow fracture. So the the first sign is swollen soft tissue up to 169 case and fat pad around 155 and fracture line present around 140 case of the positive in the positive case. This graph so the combination of radiograph feature related to apple picture and dislocation of the 178 case. So the the most common combination was we found a, is fracture with swollen soft tissue, bad pet, and fracture line. This is a graph of Fracture detection in elbow x ray of 196 case. So the most common we, we meet is supracandular fracture, and the second is lateral fracture, and the third is major condylar fracture, and the fourth is oligron fracture. And the last one is the multi-sheet fracture. This is the supracondylar fracture subtype. So it's first, first and uh, type one and type two is most common case that we need in our setting. And this is the lateral condylar. We need tie two and tie three of in of the most case. And Montesier fracture, we need tie one, tie two, and tie four often. And major condylar fracture, we usually need the case of tie three. And oligoronian fracture, usually we meet that is the case of tie one fracture. So if we compare the right and left elbow, so the left elbow is more common frequent to get the fracture. If we see the fracture by the age of the child, so the child who mostly get the elbow fracture is around one to uh, 10 years old. And the most common is five to six years old. And it, it is the fixed one. If we look the ratio of the male and female is the male is more common than female. And if we compare the percentage of detection to our audit to the other study, 
as we see in the summary of the table. So most of the study is very, very similar to our finding. So conclusion, the percentage was high to detect sample fracture using radiograph includes supracondylar fracture, lateral condylar fracture, multi-shear, major condylar fracture, and other fractures. Supracondylar fracture was the first high as incident and followed by the lateral condylar fracture, which is, was the second one. Therefore, IBOH rate is the first modality in making diagnosis and management of concern of all fracture because of the less cost and non-complex technical. So here is my reference, it's around 75 reference, I love. Thank you.